Hey, welcome back. This is Blind Sally. And I'm Artix. And we are going to play Truck Dinosaur Hunter. And I'm not going to do that thing at the beginning where I talk really fast. I don't know, we're, we're moving pretty quick here. I'm The game's still going to go pretty quickly. <laughs> you say, I played like, I don't know, like a level or two of the original N64 version of this, and then that was about it. Does this look familiar? If you played just a level or two, you might have reached this point. Oh, is it a little bit? I said I, I did not play it past like I definitely didn't play the sequel and I didn't play the entirety of this. So okay. So even well, if this is the ancient city. I see. We're getting eaten by some kind of fish there. No, oh, I think that was a dude shooting at us. Um, unlike future games, there are no killer fish in this uh, game. Which is good, because it's not until future games that we get a torpedo sled. Oh, so we're totally defenseless underwater. <laughs> well, we get a knife. But, uh... It's not great. Um, welcome to a portal world. This one's gimmick is that as I get close to an edge and collect my... Uh, one-up icons, they start to come out of the sort of electric ocean, and I sort of missed a jump and figured, forget it. Um, really not worth continuing that jump to just get more tokens when the game's gonna throw them at us like Skittles later on anyways. As they, aren't they usually to get a level key in those warps? No, those warps are entirely just extra fluff. Extra weapons, extra ammo, extra one-ups. Totally unnecessary. Oh, okay. I'm not actually sure if I get both of them in this run, so... <laughs> Again, this is not a 100% playthrough. <laughs> no, never mind. I did. Okay, we're good. This one's easy, so I'll uh, jump through here and get all the power-ups. Good old N64 first-person platforming. Oh, yeah. And all that for some ammo. Oh, yeah. Also a long swim past uh, spike traps. Really? And on the other side, there's uh, a lava pit. I said, do, do you get hurt by those spikes underwater? If you swim into them? How do you... How do you swim into a spike hard enough to hurt yourself? Troc is buff as shit. He is... Ugh. The man can propel himself through water like a goddamn bullet. I mean, obviously. Otherwise, I don't know how you would hurt yourself with a stationary <laughs> spike. Uh, he swims through water like people run. He is... He's good. So um, what you see right here are, this is sort of the ancient city itself. These are, I guess, the residential areas. Uh, there's lots of power-ups to collect in here. I'm going to skip most of it because it's just uh, an easy way for enemies to whittle down your health because uh, they keep resurrecting and popping around corners. Um, but I am going to jump in real quick because there is a backpack nearby, and I need that to double my ammo count. So what you're saying is that this is a city full of necromancers. Uh, uh, yes. Or, you know, that never gets adequately explained. It could be, like, because the campaigner, the ultimate boss, has, like, I don't know, crazy teleporting cloning technology or something. No, we I'm, we I'm haven't got sure. to the part... <laughs> Sorry, no, I, I'm pretty sure this is actually a city filled to the brim with the undead <laughs> that we're just constantly killing in over and over again. Maybe. Then again, we do we do eventually get to a point where there are robots and aliens in Turok. Uh, so who knows? Killing those Perlin uh, lower the little doors right there to get some power-ups, but uh, nothing really worthwhile. Uh, this temple, however... Um, 
Well, it also has nothing worthwhile, to be honest. <laughs> um, will lead us up to our first key. So this is really where I want to be going. Okay. You see, uh, the shotgun seems like it's remarkably accurate at range. It's incredible. It's awesome at range. Especially when it's an explosive shotgun shell. I could have picked this weapon up in the very first level, but I missed it, so... Um, at least I have it now. At least I can kill things really fast now. I mean, you just sniped that dude. He was, like, way the fuck off in the draw distance. Yeah, this isn't like one of those uh, video game shotguns where the range is ridiculously unrealistic. Uh, this is a proper shotgun. You can kill things from a distance. Well, now we got a key. Well, by that I mean, it's like, you know, with a shotgun this good, maybe it's better you didn't get it in the first level, because otherwise there would be no reason to not use it. That's, uh, yeah. Finding hidden weapons um, earlier than you should really trivialize uh, some levels. In fact, I'm pretty sure, um... I'm pretty sure I make the end of this level harder on myself by not picking up the minigun. Oh, so what you're saying is that it takes you, like, 30 seconds to kill them with your shotgun instead of five with the minigun. Yes. Also, this is the first level to have a somewhat different, uh... sort of level design. The, the previous two levels were just running around the jungle, killing dinosaurs. Um, that there are a lot more buildings now, um... Sort of switching things up. Yeah, this seems a lot a more, bit. uh, open, I guess? Like, the other two seemed like they were really linear, and, like, for as much as you could wander around, it was still basically, here are the narrow paths that you can go down. Some of them even yeah. have keys. Whereas yeah. this just kind of lets you go wherever the fuck you want. Yeah. Although you are sort of expected to sort of wander around either side and check all those temples, but as you can see, I skipped all that bullshit by climbing a tree. So, now that I've hit the button, I'm just gonna skip that entire sequence. Sounds legit. And we're at our second key already. There's how many keys in this level? Three. Oh, one more. All right. Well, that was one more to find. quick. <laughs> I know. Um, unfortunately, the last one is way at the end of the level, so we have a bit more learning to do. Um, behind this giant temple is a bit of tech armor, so that's worth jumping off for. You're saying there's no fall damage in this game, right? No, that's why I love it so much. Yeah, it's so wonderful. You, you know, just casually jump off, shatter your knees, get some armor. No big deal. Yeah. Truck has really strong knees. Wait, when I said earlier that the guy was buff, like, he is in excellent shape. Magic may or may not be involved. I, I, I can't tell. Well, I mean, look, we're already dealing with dinosaurs and a wand that literally can break time and space. I feel like... Magic has already entered this conversation a long time ago. Right. I just killed a giant ogre with a giant fireball cannon. <laughs> uh, something's happening. It's the Lost Land. Sci-fi and fantasy all blend together in a giant stew. It's, it definitely feels like... Feels almost like, um, like one of those, like, cool by committee type things. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, there's an ancient lost world, and it's got dinosaurs and ogres and magic and explosive arrows. And robots. And I sort of had to hit that switch just right, because that, uh... Wooden palisade goes back up real fast. Yeah, it looked like but you yeah, were robots just, and... Yeah, you just barely cut that one. 
So here's another one of those big wide open spaces. This one's kind of, uh, kind of gives trouble a little bit because there's so many plants that obscure your vision and allow enemies to sort of shoot at you with impunity. Um, fortunately, we're just going to skip most of that and go right to the end. So this cave right there, I'm not going to go in it because there's no point, but it is in fact a secret and it has some bonus stuff and I'm going to go back there later on. But remember that cave because we'll be going back to it. I see. Up ahead of our, are a couple of plasma rifle guys. Uh, they are jerks. I do not like them. They are accurate. They fire quickly, and they do lots of damage. Well, it's okay because their plasma their plasma rifles are no match for your arrow that for your bow that shoots arrows that explode. True. I, that's just that's just common sense. True, but I also want a plasma rifle of my own, and they do not drop one. So yeah, if you look down there, you can see all sorts of enemies. Uh, Perlin shooting fireballs. There's dudes with rifles and pistols and, and raptors and stuff. And uh, yeah, yeah, more shot. They respawn sniping. quickly. Oh yeah. I love this shotgun. But but yeah, basically my point is, um, getting in firefights down below there is sort of a waste of time, waste of time and ammo, uh, especially if you're playing on a higher difficulty since enemies don't drop ammo at higher difficulties. Oh. Those. That sure was a difficult trap. Well, <laughs> if you don't know they're coming, you just sort of burn through this section and you will get hit by them. Even knowing they're there, I sometimes get hit by them because I just want to run as fast as possible. It's understandable. This is a pretty fast-paced game. Okay, hit the switch, jump down. Hey, it's that cave I looked at earlier. And now the door's open to get the full health. So now my health is at 250 points. That seems like an unnecessary amount of health. I know, but it's great. Combined with that armor, well, I basically have 343 points. Um, sorry, 290 two hit points. Also, I saved my game there because this is the yeah, worst platforming this... section ever. Oh, yeah. This looks real bad. This section is required to progress through the game. Also, enemies drop down. So if you're trying to go through quickly, and you try and jump on a platform before an enemy lands, um, they will shove you off. Lovely! Also, where are they falling from? That seems like a question I'm not sure I really want the answer to. <laughs> uh, most people just jump straight through to the boss portal, which was ahead of us. Um, and skip this part, thinking, you know what, forget it, I don't need the life tokens. But really, in order to fully complete the game, you have to at least jump down this section. That's because, uh, surprise, we have to climb up that cliff. Oh. Oh. That cliff jump is also easy to screw up. I can't tell you how many times I've come in with a backpack, full armor, full health, um, missed that jump, lost all of that, and still had to redo it. Oh, you lose all of your power-ups when you die? Yeah. Ugh. But there we go. Piece of the time-rending space wand. Um, we're at the end of the level and haven't found a third key, which means... You want, you want to take a guess? I guess then, I mean, the most logical conclusion would be that we've got a boss to fight of some kind. We have a boss to fight. That is correct. Um, and knowing what you know about Turok Dinosaur Hunter, do you want to take a guess at what this boss is? 
I mean, it's probably either a dinosaur or a giant robot, because... You are incorrect on both accounts. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not going to go down yet. There's some, some power-ups around the arena. But how it works is the key is in the middle of the arena. And we can't get it because it's like on a little floating platform. And because the water is in these basins, um, it's out of reach. So we have to kill the boss to open the doors to let the water flood in so that the key platform bobs up. Which is kind of clever. And I didn't realize that was going on until like the 14th time I played through this game and realized, oh, the key isn't just popping out of nowhere. The water floods in to raise it. So I see. Yeah. So what kind of epic boss are we going to see here? Would you believe me if I told you it was a couple of jeeps and a guy with a knife? No? That seems almost too mundane for this whole thing. Well, he's got a gun and a boomerang as well. I think he's Australian. But yeah, Jeep won. <laughs> okay. Uh, That's a thing. The, uh, yep. And wait, there's not one, but two Jeeps. So here how it comes. Did, how did they even get the Jeep in here? That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> one of which I don't have the answer for. Um, the explosive shotgun absolutely chumps these guys, but as you can see, even with a backpack, I, don't, I can only carry 20 shells. If I had picked up the minigun earlier, um, the entire boss fight would have already been over. I can imagine. Okay, shotguns are down. This is the hard part. Um, like I say, if I had the minigun, this would be over in a few seconds. Um, but now the Australian guy is going to come at me. Um, he's got a plasma rifle and a knife, and he'll try and like kick you if you get close. Throw his can, bombs. Can we at least steal his plasma rifle? Yeah, we have to kill him first. He's got a boomerang he throws, which is like a homing electronic magic boomerang, and you cannot dodge it. Um, I don't know what triggers him to throw it, but uh, I do not like it. Oh, there but, it is. is it, but yep. when he does, it's just, fuck you, you're getting hit. Pretty much. Well, I, I, get, <clears throat> I guess that's a thing. Yep. So right now I'm just sort of uh, demonstrating how tedious this boss can be with uh, sort of conventional weapons. Um, he ducks and rolls like crazy. And if you're trying to use something like the pistol or uh, the assault rifle, you're, you're not going to have a fun time. Um, really, yeah. you want to use your big guns. Yeah, like we burned through all of our AK ammo and we only got him down to half health. Oh yeah. So let him get in close and just uh, <laughs> just drop the explosives on him. That was it. That's the Long Hunter, dead. I see. And now we have one of the best guns in the game. That's and, it. Oh, and that's it. And then it just kicks us out. <laughs> it just kicks us out. That's a little um, unceremonious, I guess. Uh, Turk doesn't have time for ceremony. I Clearly. He's a man about getting things done fast. Like my hero, Sonic.